Okay, we're to the rescue. Gotta pull apart. The rest of the train's down here somewhere. Just uh, coming up on the situation here. See what happened. That's not what you want to see. A lone locomotive sitting there. <laughs> All right. Lucky eyes up there at the mine. It's getting on behind him. We'll go investigate. Okay. This thing uh, went in the PCS vault. It did what it was supposed to do. Applied the brakes. And you can see there, it's been skidding. The rails are a little bit wet this morning. So. That system functions well, but the rest of the train, who knows where it got stopped. Shut this air off. Okay. Go up and see what we got in the cab. This is a Curve 8. Hmm. Okay, we're in the cab. The red light PCS open. Okay. Now we gotta clear it. Well, we got it. <laughs> Going down, hook up the trip. I gotta follow him down. Uh, yeah, Russell was in there. Russell came walking back up by the time I got up here, so uh, I didn't want to tape Russell showing that how he cleared that. And uh, I am not the I am not an expert or have a whole lot of knowledge on the remote system either. So uh, I did get some lessons from Russell on uh, how to clear that because that locomotive was being controlled by the lead locomotive if that makes sense even though it was just sitting here so we had to clear all that anyway we'll be back okay it's uh right behind us i'll show you how far it takes for a loaded coal train to get stopped and remember we're coming down uh uh, 1.75 percent grade and the lead locomotive and the rear and the train dpu were both on dynamics coming down here so uh their train speed was probably around 23 so we're coming down with all uh, 38 loads show you how far it takes once the train went into emergency to get her stopped here and help him gonna help him hook up to the trip make sure everything's all right poor guy's gonna have to walk back to that lead uh, lead locomotive man so we're not quite uh, not quite a half a mile We figure where our front locomotive was. And then we're probably going to look at about the pretty close uh, to a half or a little bit over a half a mile to get him stopped. Curvature also adds a little bit of resistance. have a really goofball, goofball, goofball remote system here in order for this unit to be controlled by the lead locomotive, the car brakes have to be in the three-quarter position. 
Ah, this unit does not supply air to the trip. It's a goofball system. All right. Goofball system. So in order to clear the PCS fault, he had to throw it into an emergency all the way over here to clear that. And then we had to go up into the manual lead. And there's a knob right over here for a manual lead over to get the locomotive tram down here. Now we're waiting because uh, my, my operator Russ is walking the trip back to the lead locomotive and um, we're going to see if we need to see if both locomotives will link back up on the remote system. So I'm sitting in here in case he needs help getting that remote system linked back up. So there you have it. <laughs> All right, this is railroad. Rainy day, of course. Okay, pull apart. It happens. Okay, won't set up right. So we gotta knock our uh, belt fat breaker off here. Okay, turn it back on. Back on, Russell. Going through its thing. Booty. Probably can't read that. Hardware initialization complete. Loading operating system. All right. initializing right now Russell <laughs> Russ would you go to channel four out getting a lot of static off of you how's that Dave much much better yeah, just let me in with that clear state. Okay. That yellow box will disappear. Now, Roger on that. Okay, we're cleared. Okay, Dave, I need you to just push the number four and then confirm it on the bottom of the green square. Okay. Didn't work. Uh, this isn't like the... Uh, Sheets uh, machine. I pushed it three times, didn't do anything. I didn't get a sandwich. Hey, Dave, you have to bring a square a couple times first and then go up and uh, press the one that has the number four on the end of it. Manual lead, would that have anything to do with it? 
the electrician on board he was not able to get it set up again either so they're trying to reboot the system again we'll see what happens Uh, initial registration. They got to register the box. And I don't know how to do that. So I can't tell you more about it than that. But I think we're making more better progress now than we were when I was in there. That's what happens when you get somebody that knows what they're doing instead of me, dummy me. <laughs> Not good. Okay, this is uh, a, what's a PCS fault? I mean, what's, what is it actually? This right here is a uh, air piping diagram for the 26L brake system. Uh, this particular one's for the SD40 and the 38. The, uh, I really don't know when the 26L brake system came into play. Kind of interesting is the uh, when we rode 1309 at the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad, it had a rendition of the 26L brake system on it. That was pretty neat. So, uh, the uh, it's a very reliable system. It's still actually used on the some adaptation of it is still actually used on the newer EMD locomotives. So. Um, this is your number two. Let's see if I can get that focus there. Right there. Number two, main reservoir. That supplies your brake system. And I'm not going to go through all this diagram. That brings your air in to 
your 26C brake valve. And the way I understand it, there's a self-lapping valve. But um, when, when the locomotive goes into PCS, there's a lot involved. There's a lot of electrical that I don't have a schematic for. Uh, so I can't show you that. But this will PC it will go into PCS fault if you know the trains have an order. Um, here's your sentry. I know this is a little bit difficult to see. Yeah. But uh, so if some two of our locomotives have dead mans, one has an order, and if uh, let's say the <laughs> the operator here. Uh, becomes unconscious. <clears throat> um, the alerter in this, this one has the alerter in it. It's 3098, it's the SD40-2. So, when that operator becomes unconscious or for whatever reason, then you get a flashing light in there and that has to be acknowledged. If that is not acknowledged, then you get some bells and whistles and stuff. And if that's not acknowledged, then what happened, it'll go into PCS all right and the same thing is when like we had here where, where the uh, train come uncoupled and lost that sudden uh, discharge of all that air to put it into PCS so what happens with PCS and PCS is act well what happens with PCS then this through electrically it uh, knocks off all throttle. Say we were in throttle run 5 or if we were on dynamics it would knock off all functions. Okay and obviously if it wouldn't would apply the train to go into emergency and apply the brakes. Locomotive brakes also car brakes on these older locomotives for the locomotive brakes. Now PCS is it actually an acronym for pneumatic control switch, most people will tell you. Um, and that's okay, and I'm all right with that, but if you wanna get really technical, it's called a power cutoff switch. That's what PCS actually means. Power cutoff switch. So, there you have it. Um, <laughs> okay. Power cutoff switch. That that switch is actually what exactly what it does. It cuts off power to the throttle. Okay, very good. Now you know what PCS means.